This is a tutorial on exponential functions. The first thing that we're going to discuss in this tutorial are the laws of exponents. The first law we're going to discuss is that if we have two numbers with the same base and different exponents multiplied together, then you can just add the exponents. So if I had 2 cubed times 2 to the 4th, that's equal to 2 to the 7th, 3 plus 4, so just add the exponents. x squared times x to the 5th, that would be equal to x to the 7th, because I would just add the 2 and the 5. The next law is when we have a power to a power. If I have a base to an exponent and then that whole number is to another exponent, then I can just multiply the exponents. So if I have 2 cubed, and then squared, that's equal to 2 to the 6th. 2 times 3 would be our new exponent. x squared, and then to the 5th power, that's equal to x to the 10th. 2 times 5 gives us our 10. Now if you ever see a negative exponent, here we have a to the negative m, that's equal to 1 over that number with a positive exponent. or you can think of it as a 1 over a in a fraction to the positive m exponent. So if you have 2 to the negative 3, that's equal to 1 over 2 cubed, or 1 half cubed, however you want to write it. The next law we're going to talk about is the distributive property. If we have two numbers multiplied together and then put 2 an exponent or a power, then you can distribute that exponent to both of the numbers that are being multiplied. So a times b to the n power is equal to a to the n power times b to the n power, or 2 times x squared is equal to 2 squared times x squared. The last law of exponents we're going to talk about is when we have a zero power. Anything to the zero power is 1. 2 to the zero power is 1. 10 to the 0 power is 1. Any number to the 0 power is equal to 1. So let's try using these laws of exponents to simplify this expression. Here we have 2 cubed times 2 to the 4x over 2 cubed all to the 4th power times 2 to the 4th power. The first thing that I'm going to deal with here is this center section. I'm going to take this 4 and I'm going to distribute it to the numerator and the denominator. This is going to look like 2 to the 4x to the 4th power over 2 cubed to the 4th power. Now whenever we have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So 2 to the 4x and then to the 4th power 4x times 4 would be 16x, or 2 to the 16x. 2 cubed, and then to the 4th power, we multiply our exponents, that's 2 to the 12th. Now this denominator, I can think of this as 1 over 2 to the negative 12th. So I have 2 to the 16x divided by 1 over 2 to the negative 12th, which means I can take this and bring it up top, this is equal to 2 to the 16x times 2 to the negative 12th. And when I multiply these together, I add my exponents. So this is going to become 2 to the 16x minus 12 power. Now all of this is still being multiplied by 2 cubed and 2 to the 4th power. Since these are all multiplied together, again, I can just add my exponents. So this is going to be 2 to the 16x, now minus 12, plus 4, plus 3, so that's plus 7 more, so this will just be minus 5. So this whole expression simplifies down to 2 to the 16x minus 5 power. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is the number e often called Euler's constant or the natural constant, e is equal to 
2.718281828, and it just keeps going on and on. None of these digits will ever repeat in any kind of pattern. E is a special number, a lot like pi. Pretty much want to just memorize that it's equal to about 2.718. E comes from, if we have this expression here, 1 plus 1 over n to the n power. If n is equal to infinity, then you'll get the number e, exactly. You can try this. If you have a calculator, plug in a very large number for n in both of these spots. If you plug in 10,000 or 100,000, you'll get a number that's very close to this number. So that's where e comes from, and we see e a lot when we talk about exponential functions. If you're given an exponential function with an e in it, try to remember that e is just a number. It's not a variable. It has a constant value of approximately 2.718. And all the same rules apply as if the base of these exponent terms was any other number. So if I wanted to simplify this expression, e to the 3x times e to the 3x over e squared, and then all cubed, then I would first take this outside 3 and distribute it to both the numerator and the denominator. So this would look like e to the 3x, and then cubed, over e squared, and then cubed. Now when you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents, so 3x times 3, this is e to the 9x, e squared and then cubed, that's e to the 6th power. Now I can bring this up and make this e to the 9x times e to the negative 6, and when these are multiplied together, I can add my exponents. So this whole term will become e to the 9x minus 6. Then don't forget that this is still multiplied by e to the 3x. When you multiply these two together, you add their exponents. So we'll have a 3x plus a 9x. That's equal to e to the 12x minus 6. And that would be our simplified form. So all of the standard laws for exponential functions apply if you have an e in your equation. Because remember, e is just a number. Next, let's talk about the graphs of exponential functions. An exponential function is usually written as f of x is equal to a to the x, or sometimes you'll see it as f of x is equal to a times b to the x. Either way is acceptable. This second form here just has a constant out in front. But what's important to notice for an exponential function, your variable is an exponent. Now the graph of an exponential function, if your base, your a term, is greater than 1, your exponential function will look like this. It starts low and goes to positive infinity in the y direction as x gets larger. Also notice that for the left-hand side of this equation, our x-axis acts like an asymptote. This is because this function will never equal zero. There's no power that you can put two to and get this equal to zero. If you make x very small or very negative, this function value will become very small, but it will never equal zero. Now, if your base or your a value is between 0 and 1, so it's a fraction, then your exponential graph will be flipped. It will start very high towards positive infinity in the y direction, and as you move in the positive x direction, you will approach 0. Again, for this graph, our x-axis here is an asymptote. This graph will never actually hit 0 because this equation can never be equal to 0. But as x gets very large, we will get a smaller and smaller fraction, so we will get closer and closer to zero. There are also rules for transforming or translating exponential graphs. Here we have our standard 
exponential function and the graph of an example, f of x is equal to 2 to the x, and it's graphed here in blue. A translated version of an exponential graph looks like this. We have f of x is equal to a x minus h plus k. Now h here is a horizontal translation. k is a vertical translation. If h is positive, then we will translate our graph in the positive x direction. If k is positive, then we will translate our graph in the positive y direction. So here we have another example. This is just like f of x is equal to 2 to the x, except this graph is translated horizontally, two units, and vertically, down three units, because our k is negative and our h is positive. But our base here, this 2 is the same as our parent function f of x is equal to 2 to the x. So this green line is actually the exact same function as the blue line, except every point has been translated two units to the right and three units down. Again, every point, two units to the right and three units down. So if you ever need to graph a transform exponential function, that you can graph the parent function and then just translate it h and k units. So now let's try graphing what we've learned here. Let's graph y is equal to 3 to the x power and y is equal to 3 to the x plus 2 power and then minus 3. This second equation is a translated version of our first equation. This is in the form y is equal to a to the x minus h power plus k. So for this second equation here, our h is negative 2, because it's minus h and plus 2, and our k is minus 3. So to graph our first function here, y is equal to 3x, we're going to need some points. So we'll start with some x values, and then we'll solve for our y values. x values that I'm going to choose are going to be negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I plug in negative 1 into this equation, I'll have 3 to the negative 1. Now if you have a negative exponent, that means this all goes in the denominator, so this will be 1 third. If I plug in 0 for x, we'll have 3 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. If I plug in 1 for x, I'll have 3 to the first power, or just 3. And if I plug in 2 for x, I'll have 3 squared, or 9. I can plot these points. Negative 1 and 1 third. It's right about there. 0, 1. Right about there. 1, 3. And 2, 9. 9 is off our chart. It's roughly there. Now there's no way I can make this equation equal to 0 or make y equal to 0. So I know that this x-axis is going to be an asymptote for my graph. So our graph of y is equal to 3 to the x should look something like that. Now we want to graph y is equal to 3 to the x plus 2 power and then minus 3. Well remember this is the exact same graph as y is equal to 3 to the x except we have a translation in the horizontal and in the vertical. Our translation is to the left, or in the negative x direction, 2, and in the negative y direction, 3. So every one of these points can be moved 2 to the left and down 3. 2 to the left and down 3. And if we connect these points, the graph of our translated function should look something like this. So that's how you can graph exponential functions and translated exponential functions. Now, exponential functions are one-to-one -one functions. 
and because they're one-to-one -one functions, you can use a one-to-one -one property to solve them. Basically, if you have the same base, in this case a, and an exponent on each one, that means these exponents have to be equal if these two terms are equal. So if I had 2 to the x was equal to 2 to the 4th, that means that x has to be equal to 4. So you can use this property to solve exponential functions. Here we have an example problem, 4 to the 2x over 4 to the 4th times 4 to the 6th, and this is equal to 32. To solve this, the first thing I'm going to have to do is simplify this left-hand side. Now 4 to the 2x over 4 to the 4th, I can think of that as 4 to the 2x times 4 to the negative 4th. These are multiplied together, so it means I can add their exponents, so this will become 4 to the 2x minus 4 power. Now again, this is still multiplied by 4 to the 6th. And since these are all multiplied together, I can add their exponents. If I have 4 to the 2x minus 4 plus 6, that means I have 4 to the 2x plus 2 power. So this is my left hand side and this is still equal to 32. Now to solve this for x, we have to realize that 32, this is 4 to the 5 halves power. Or you can think of this as the square root of 4 to the fifth power. Once we know that this is 4 to the 5 halves power, that means that 4 to the 2x plus 2 power is equal to 4 to the 5 halves power. And since these bases here are the same, that means that our exponents have to be equal. So 2x plus 2 has to be equal to 5 halves. Now this is easy to solve for x. I just subtract 2 from both sides. I have 2x is equal to 5 halves minus 2. That's 1 half. Divide both sides by 2 and I get x is equal to 1 fourth. So because our bases were the same, we could set the exponents equal to one another because these two terms were equal to one another. Knowing that allowed us to solve for x. So that's how you can use the one-to-one -one property to solve exponential functions. And that also completes the tutorial on exponential functions.